Nam Yo Renge Kyo was literally the first sounds I heard when I was born. My mother went into labor and there was no time to get her to the hospital, so I was born right there in our family living room. My grandmother always tells me the story of how she was by my mother's side just chanting Nam Yo Renge Kyo over and over again. Hello, my name is Christopher Sanders and I've been chanting Nam Yo Renge Kyo with the SGI my whole life. My grandmother was the first person in my family to start chanting. I never met my father and my grandmother has always been the foundation in my life. Growing up, we were constantly moving to different homes until we finally settled in on the west side of Chicago. The west side of Chicago is known for its high crime rate and gang activity. The murder rate has been so high, it's been nicknamed Shy Rat, and many youth fall victim to the streets. But this was not the case for me. My grandmother was always bringing me to SGI Buddhist meetings, and I participated in these activities wholeheartedly, and made many new friends and faith that will last even through till today. These activities gave me self-confidence and helped me realize that I have an unlimited potential within my life. The SGI has always been like a second home for me, and helped me clearly recognize what is right and what is wrong, which helped me to stay out of the streets. The school system in my neighborhood was also suffering, so from sixth grade till the end of high school, my grandmother took up the challenge of homeschooling me. Man, my grandmother is some special woman. I really owe her all of my life. When I turned 18, I started to feel a tremendous amount of pain in my groin area. I went to the county hospital and was told it was probably an infection and was sent home with a round of antibiotics. But the pain never went away. Things stayed the same for two more years till I got so sick that I started to cough up blood. I remember laying sick on the couch, barely able to breathe, talk, or eat anything. I was rushed to the hospital and the doctors discovered two lesions on my lungs. And within hours, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer. My family and I were in total shock. The cancer had spread all throughout my chest and lungs. I was only 20 years old. I was rushed into surgery and had my testicle removed. And they underwent an intensive three months of chemotherapy treatment. Those three months, it was like a life or death battle. After each chemo session, it just felt like I was dead. But throughout all of this pain, the thing that kept going was my grandmother. She never left my side. We would wake up every morning at 6 a.m. and chant Nam Yo Ho Renge Kyo together. We would study the writings of SGI President Daisaku Ikeda together. And I learned that he was supposed to live beyond his 30s as he was diagnosed with, with tuberculosis, which there was no cure for. But because of his Buddhist faith, here he is today, alive in his 80s. One quote that I read from Daisaku Ikeda at that time really inspired me to keep fighting. When your determination changes, everything else will begin to move in the direction you desire. The moment you resolve to be victorious, every nerve and fiber in your being will immediately orient itself toward your success. On the other hand, if you think this is never going to work out, then at that instant, every cell in your being will be deflated and give up the fight. And then everything really will move in the direction of failure. I decided that my illness was not going to get the best of me. As I chanted with this energy, my body grew stronger and stronger day by day. I responded better to the chemotherapy and had fewer side effects. The doctors were so amazed at how well I was doing. And in January of 2011, I was pronounced cancer free. But soon after, the bills started piling up. I owed over $200,000. I was completely overwhelmed. I didn't know where that kind of money would come from. I had to put work and school on hold during my chemotherapy treatments. I worry that this debt will hinder all the things I want to do with my life. It was yet another challenge for me. My grandmother said, you have to be more determined than the problem. I tried my best to do this and kept chanting rigorously every day. I was also attending Buddhist meetings on a daily basis, like working with the Soka group at the center, and received so much strength from my SGI family. One day, I came home and saw yet another letter from the hospital. I said to my grandmother, Oh, that's just another bill. I'm not opening this right now. She said, don't think like that. Maybe they're saying that all your bills have been paid. I love my grandmother, but I just didn't really believe her. I opened the letter anyway, and it stated that all my bills had been covered by the hospital and that I owed a $0 balance. 
Throughout all of this, I deepened my belief in my own power. Previously, I had placed limits on what I could achieve and therefore I hadn't really tried all that hard. But my Buddhist practice has proven to me that at a crucial moment, even a life-threatening moment, I have it in me to be victorious no matter what. In June 2013, one morning, my uncle was taking my grandmother and I to our SGI Chicago Buddhist Center. However, when we approached an intersection, a car immediately runs the red light and hits us in the side and sends our car flying into a traffic signal. However, the aftermath of this was even worse. I get out the car in a, in a daze and the other person gets out of their car and pulls out his gun. And when I saw that, I immediately like, like, you know, thought to myself, I have to get to the back seat and tell my grandmother to stay in the car. This person's armed. The person who was armed looked at the driver of that other car and asked, what should he do with us? And my uncle just yelled out to him and told him, just go away, just go away. And when that happened, other individuals from the neighborhood started coming around and I'm noticing the situation. And the moment that they noticed, that's when the other guy drove away. And soon after, the ambulance and the police came and just really reassured us and told us how lucky we were. This kind of a traumatic incident could have been a real paralyzing ex experience that scarred me for life. But my Buddhist practice has taught me how to use this as a fuel to push my life forward. This really made me feel like enough is enough and things have got to change. I'm not going to just be a bystander among this chaos, you know. I'm going to work harder than ever before to create positive causes in my community that will have a ripple effect to those around me. Buddhism taught me that the actions I take every day matter and contribute to making this positive change happen. I just graduated from Harold Washington College with my associate's degree in science and was just accepted into the Illinois Institute of Technology where I am pursuing my major in mechanical engineering. My vision for the future is to use the knowledge to benefit society and constantly grow my own life by helping other youth like me that they can grow their own lives as well.